Okay, I think we're recording. So yes, sir. let's just keep this casual, have some fun, talk about our lives and how we're designing them. But um, I want to start in the introduction, kind of ask you guys what your thoughts are on the introduction so it gives a couple stories in there that are pretty interesting and one of the stories there's uh there's a woman who likes rocks all growing up so she goes and um she goes to school to be a um geologist so she's studies all four years gets her degree and she moves home and her parents are like what the heck she's like walking dogs for money and and babysitting and it goes in and it says that 27 percent of college grads don't work in a profession that involves their degree which i think is super interesting and that's kind of it kind of leads into the authors discussing um how these students really don't know what they're going to do with their life they're going to school they're paying this money but but do they really know what they want to do with their life so my question to you guys, and we, we can kind of get this started or kicked off this way, is what does it look like as you've gone through college and the professional sales program? Like, are you going to end up in sales? Are you still figuring it out? Because that's kind of what this whole book is about, is how, how are we going to design our lives? We're in the here and now. What are we doing? Yeah. If it's all right, I'll go first. So I'll throw out my experience in the sales program, I have wanted to go into medical devices just because I'm very interested in that and I'm attracted to that. Um, however, just this past month, my buddy who graduated from the professional sales program um, really wants to be an entrepreneur and he wants to start his own company. He wants to start a lot of different companies. And so kind of in Josie's position, you know, you have to be a really good salesman in order to sell your idea or your product or your business, you know? So it's valuable to have those persuasion, persuasion, persuasion and selling skills. But um, I also feel like a lot of the classes we've been taking have given us somewhat of an entrepreneurial feel, at least for me. Um, and he asked me to help him with like a window washing company. And I was like, I never dreamed I would, you know, sell, you know, a, a service like that. But it's kind of like a stepping stone to bigger ideas. So I think as I've gone through it, doors have opened and opportunities have presented themselves and they're like stepping stones to where I eventually want to end up. So that's kind of how I've seen it um, in these past couple of years. Jax, I, I have another question. So in the book, it talks about how some people think it's too late and they, they say that it's a, dysfunctional belief is what they talk about in the book and mm -hmm. dysfunctional belief is it's too late to change so like let's say that you're 40 and your friend comes to you and you're like well i've got this other career in med device cells um they they talk about reframing it so they say it's never too late to design your life to design a life that you love do you agree that that it you know there's there's we're we're all pretty young but is there a time where you're like it is too late to to restructure your life or or do you disagree with the book agree with it i i don't think there is a cutoff you know for wanting to redesign your life i mean you got one life you know and so you do what you want to do with it um i can't remember who this is i can't remember the name but um there's this elderly woman i can't i, I apologize i can't remember her name but she's like in her 80s and she just barely started doing painting and she's apparently super, super popular. I've never seen any of her painting, but I've heard a lot about her. And so, um, and I, I'm also thinking about um, the woman with ADP from last night. Um, hmm. I was talking to her and she was saying she actually wanted to go into medical device sales. And so she studied like chemistry, biology, pretty sure she graduated in like, like some sort of crazy chemistry degree. Wow. And yeah, and so she gets that degree, um, she finds ADP, she thought, okay, this is kind of a stepping stone to where I want to be, you know, I people need money. Um, and so she started off there, and she's been there ever since because she's loved it, you know, and so I think there is no cutoff date to, you know, changing our lives, 
Um, and I think as we pursue what we're interested in, where we're supposed to end up is going to present itself to us. I, I agree. I, um, I actually, so I'm kind of different. I went into um, construction management out of high school. Um, That's awesome. Program. And so that's that. I mean, even now I'm, I'm actually working as a project manager, as a construction manager right now. And so my life is like not in the sales world yet, but I know that these classes have just helped me be a better person and be a better, you know, communicator with subs. Um, it teaches you how to, you know, make decisions and be, you know, a leader. And, and so I feel like these professional sales classes have been super helpful. I will say probably, you know, if I had to choose right now, I probably should have stayed in construction management, but um, I think sales is a huge, a huge factor. And if I ever wanted to own my own business, sales is, is the major for that. Hey, Logan, I got a quote for you. It's never too late to design a life you love, buddy. That's a big quote. <laughs> and it's funny because I was literally on that exact same page that says that. So. <laughs> no, man, I, think I, think, just, I think you're oh, definitely on sorry, the right there, Logan. Like construction management, like obviously you're working construction, I think would help you a lot. But I think you're right. If you want to own your own company, like having a sales background will be so important, like so crucial. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Josie can speak to that quite a bit. Yeah, I was just going to say, I know Jackson said that, like, the sales program has been a good foundation. You use the term foundation. And it definitely is, like, just a little brief history on me. I had no idea what I was going to do with my life at all. I just started going to college because I knew it was going to be a good thing to do. I had no design for my life. I graduated in COVID, so there's, like, there's no point in planning anything because if you can't have a graduation, why can you expect anything to happen in life? And so, yeah, I just started going to college and I did start taking sales classes and started loving them. And it was through the sales program that I was able to start my business. And it absolutely is a great foundational thing. I'm doing the entrepreneurship minor too. I can't remember if I told you guys about that. And it's great and all, but it's not teaching me like the actual skills, like the people skills, like the sales program is. So I'm very glad that I have the sales program as my major and the entrepreneurship is just the under the rug minor. That's not really that big of a deal because I do think that it is so helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. I, um, I'm a big fan. I, I shouldn't say a big fan cause this guy's kind of a criminal, but I, I like Jordan Belfort. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he's not kind of a criminal. He is a criminal, but, uh, <laughs> he, I have been watching a couple of, of his videos recently and he was saying exactly what Josie was saying. You know, even if you're not a typical salesperson, you know, you're not the traditional salesperson and you are building your own company like Josie, you know, you need to be able to sell that idea to people. You need to be able to sell that belief, that certainty to people, um, he says sales is a trans a, a transmission of certainty to somebody, you know. And so, Josie, you you're designing wigs, you know. If, I don't design you, them; I just sell them. Oh, <laughs> you're selling them. You're selling them. Sorry, uh, yeah, no, but if good. you can't uh, transfer, you know, that feeling of certainty you have about your wigs, mm -hmm. those people aren't going to feel that, you know. And so, yeah. it's it's super important to have these persuasion skills, like you were talking about. Absolutely. Yeah, <clears throat> Josie is something that, that reminded me a lot of my college experience. So I started at Utah Valley in their business management program. And I was taking classes like data analytics, accounting, like all these, all these courses where, sure, I would learn how to do something on like Tableau and then forget it like a week later. And I was like, man, this, this sounds, this feels so dumb. Like, why am I, why am I doing this? And like coming to the sales, um, area like transferring to Weber going through all that like it's been crazy to see how much it's already helped me just talk with people like randomly you know like teaches you so many great people skills and and I think it is a good way to just 
build a foundation like you guys have said like it's such a strong foundation to be able to talk with people to be able to sell yourself and to sell anything right like if you can get behind something you can sell it like right. never in my life would i think about selling wigs like josie but i've been in classes where josie has sold me a wig and <laughs> I'd, I'd buy a wig from her you know like yeah. and so i think i think the professional sales is really good at that for sure i think it's awesome I think one of the things that we've learned about in professional sales is um, how to be problem solvers, uh, providing value. And and in the book, it gives a uh, basically just super simple equation to um, a well-defined life. And it's problem finding plus po problem solving equals a well-designed life. I want to get your guys' thoughts on that. Um kind of what that equation means to you problem finding it's on a uh, page four um not in the introduction in the actual actual book page four problem finding plus problem solving equals a well-designed life um how can we re relate that to sales and providing value because i feel like problem solving is sales so yeah anybody got anything on that i honestly think you can use this in, I mean, in anything in your life, not just in sales, but, but I think obviously it equates to a lot of sales companies and sales employees is, is, you know, employers are looking for someone. They're not looking for someone to create problems. Obviously they're looking to someone to just come in and solve all their problems and, and be there to recognize those problems and, and take care of them. Um, in my my company that I work for right now, we've had like three new employees in the past like six months. And <clears throat> I will say two of them have came in and have just been, it's just been such a smooth transition because they they solve problems. And, you know, this, this other um, employee has come in and just been kind of scatterbrained and just doesn't know what to do because she can't find those problems and she doesn't understand how to solve them. And, and that's just a huge for an employer to have employees who can, can find the problems first and then be able to and put in a plan and use the resources there to solve them. And then obviously his, he's making his life way easier and making everyone's life around them way easier. Josie, I like to point to you because the other day when we discussed, when we were talking about your business and wigs, you know, obviously there was some that happened while you while you left your original company. But one of the things that I thought was so interesting is you found a problem that, hey, sometimes people who buy wigs, they don't want to walk into a store like that's a difficult thing to do. So you found a problem that was that you could solve. You could go into their house and do uh, consultations inside their house. How's that been for you? It's definitely been a different experience. Like I told you guys, I have the experience of working in an actual store and it's very, like hair loss is such a traumatizing thing. And so where I have been able to go in the homes of my clients, it is like a night and day difference. It goes from being like a retail, like just sketchy kind of uncomfortable sell to a, oh, we're best friends now. This is super easy. I'm just helping out a best friend. and. Yeah, so it's just, it makes a total difference as to how easy it is to sell things. Because obviously I know a lot about hair loss. I know a lot about wigs. I can look at a person and tell them exactly what they need to wear. Um, but it's really hard to get that point across, especially when you're in that kind of icky selling environment. But once you take that away, people are a lot more understanding and a lot more willing to listen to your ideas so that's what's been working for me I guess <laughs> that's awesome thank you yeah I think it's interesting because when we look at it like even away from a sales perspective like finding an issue in my own life you know I mean it's like for a long time I wanted to I wanted to um I wanted to go into medical not sales but just the medical field I wanted to be like an anesthesiologist and then I took one one medical anatomy class and had to cut open a pig and I about passed out and so automatically I found a problem there 
And it's yeah. like, okay, well, how do we solve this problem for to change my life and the trajectory? And I like to talk to people. Um, I like to try to be a leader. So it's like, okay, what what direction is this going to take me in my life? So I ended up getting my real estate license and taking sales classes, which have helped tremendously. And so I just I just think it's interesting how the book does a good job at, at it. It really simplifies it. Like there's a problem, solve the problem, and it's a well defined life. And I feel like I've been happy since I made that change and and kind of change directions. And I'm sure it's going to happen uh multiple times in our life like then we discussed how, how you have three different work lives within mm -hmm. your life which which I think is awesome so real quick can I interject just with this equation have you guys read the atomic habits book I have not I it want to. Times. oh my gosh okay everybody told me they were like Josie you need to read this book so I've been reading it at the same time that I've been reading this Design Your Life book, and it they're really good books to pair together. And the whole entire Atomic Habits book explains deeper how you can apply this equation of problem finding plus problem solving equals a better life. So I would highly recommend you guys read that. I'm surprised you have it because it is such a good book. I am now one of those people that will rave about it um, but yeah it's so interesting how even the smallest things within our life we can just take one little problem and alter our way of thinking about that problem and you solve it and then life is great so highly highly recommend that thank you uh kind of so this isn't in the book but in one of the our past sales classes we had to watch a simon sinek video about the why it a lot of companies talk about the what, the how, and why. But if we reverse that, you know, this is why we do this. Uh, this is how we do it. We just, he was talking about Apple, you know, we make, uh, we want people to have a wonderful life. They, we want their work life balance to be super easy. We just happen to make computers or something like that. You know, I can't remember exactly. So Josie, when she was talking about her company, she's like, I want to help people feel confident about themselves. I want people to feel you know, uh, attractive, uh, happy. I just happen to sell wigs, you know? And so I think as we take a problem and like Josie was saying, we switch our perspective on it. We can really find that unique solution instead of a typical solution. That's awesome. Wow. You guys are making me feel so good about myself. <laughs> I know. We keep going back to Josie. <laughs> this is not supposed to be in all of that. Um, that's perfect. That that kind of leads on to another thing that I want to talk about. So in what chapter is this? In chapter two, it's it's building a compass. And uh, if you go to page um, 34 and then also 36, you know, Jackson, you're kind of talking about uh, the why. And um, I think that this chapter really covers that great because it talks about your work view reflection and then also your life view reflection. And it asks you to ask a couple questions. So why work? What's it for? And then on the life view reflection, why are we here? And you could you could take that from a bunch of different perspectives. Why are we here religiously? Why are we here, uh, you know, just all sorts of perspectives. Um, so I kind of want to see what your guys' compass is. Like, why, why do you work? Why why is you know why are we here mm -hmm. yeah i remember uh, i remember doing this assignment for one of our or just one of our weekly assignments and as i was doing like the work view reflection it, it asked me like why work i was like well make money like like, <laughs> I, like like i don't think it needs to be a lot more i don't know like more than that but then the next question is what well, what's work for is where i really i i had to think i was like I don't know, like, I want to make money, but why do I want to make money, right? And if you asked me this question, like, three years ago, I'd say, I don't know, you know, to buy a cool car, you know, like, something like that. But, you know, I got married in that time, I, I've matured, I've grown, and, and work for me is just to give me the life that I want to live, right? Like, I want to do something I enjoy, I want to be successful in something. But the most important part for me is to make my like my wife's dreams come true basically right 
Like she wants to own horse property in Utah. And I don't know if you guys have looked how expensive land is, but like, Dude. man, I got to start selling a lot of stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that's kind of my motivation. I'm like, man, like she wants like two or three acres to put horses on. Like, all right, we better buckle down. And so <laughs> for me, it's just been so much about thinking about how I can help other people in my life succeed. And in return, I'll obviously succeed. I'll get the things I want and, and out of that. But that was kind of the biggest takeaway I, I had from this assignment is finding my why and what. And and knowing that, like, it's just helped me push me so much to work so hard and to push through and when times suck and things. So I agree. When you get married, it definitely changed your perspective. <laughs> like, before I was married, I was like living in a house with a bunch of boys, just having a good time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get married and your compass changes. And I agree, like yeah. my perspective, my why literally is just provide my wife the life that she wants to live. And and luckily our goals align. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. Your compass just shifts one way. And I, I would imagine that when we have kids, it's going to shift even more. That'll be a whole nother chapter that we have to discover in our life. <laughs> and I think going back to your question of like what, I mean, the question of like what work is for and what, you know, what is work, why work? I, I feel like that changes in different chapters of your life. I feel like there's definitely, it, it's it's more of a goal based question. Like what what is your goal right now? And then you might achieve that goal and then it might be something different later. And I think there's, you know, especially in different jobs, like you might have a job right now and you have a goal in your company or your job and you might get to that point or get to a cap and it's like, okay, well, what's next? What's my next goal? Like, where, where do I want to go after this? And so I think goals are huge um, in, in these questions and, and having a goal in mind when thinking about these questions will, will help you answer them. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, again, with the Jordan Belford, I'm sorry. <laughs> he Going off of what Logan was saying, he's saying, yeah, goals are fantastic. And those goals are eventually going to get you to that one vision you have, you know, and it sounds like for, for Nick and Connor, uh, our visions are very similar. I don't know about Josie and, and Logan, but I, I, I want a family as well. You know, I want to provide for my family. I take my role as, as a husband and eventually a father, uh, very seriously, you know, these people are depending on me and I want to be able to, uh, provide the life that they want to live, you know? And so that one vision of having a family where I can help them live the life they want to live, that's, that's where I want to get. And so those goals, like Logan was saying, is going to help me get there. And it's going to help us get to that one vision that we just want so, so badly. And I think um, for me, especially like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I get kind of stuck in like, you know, a thought of like, I need to be there before mm -hmm. I'm right now. And like, I always not necessarily looking at other people, but, I have to remind myself I am young and I still am, you know, in college and like, I don't have it all right now, but you know, there is a later down the road where I might have it all. And so I think, you know, pushing yourself um, in a job or in school or whatever, like where you are right now um, is huge. And, and eventually you'll get to that point, obviously not looking too far ahead. Cause I feel like I get in that, that state of mind. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I get oh, away from myself. 100%. All the time. I, I think uh, I, my dad always tells me, you know, it's not about how fast you're going, but the direction you're going in, you know, it, you know, the fact that we're in school, we're literally investing in our future. The fact that we're working, you know, uh, not to pick on Josie again, starting your own company, you know, uh, you're investing in your future. You know, and so, yeah, it's super easy. Um, I'm totally in your boat too, Logan. I, I look at my friends and I'm like, gosh, what did I do wrong? You know, but it's, it, we can't compare ourselves. It's okay. I have a test tomorrow. What can I do right now in order to get a good grade on that? So down the road, I can land a good job that I want to help me achieve those goals. So yeah, I, I totally feel like that, Logan. 
all the time. <laughs> Good. I, uh, this chapter is all about finding your compass, right? And so if you skip ahead to kind of like the very end of the chapter, it talks about finding your true north. And like on a compass, it'll always, you know, point north. It'll always tell you which way to go. You just kind of have to figure out which way you want to go. Um, and one of the last paragraphs says, Anytime you're changing your situation or pursuing a new thing or wondering what you're doing at a particular job, stop. Before you start, it's a good idea to check your compass and orient yourself. Now that you have your compass, it's time to find your way. This is a quest after all. So I get stuck in the same boat a lot like Logan, especially lately, I feel like. So like we're so close to graduating. I'm like, man, yeah. I feel like I should be further ahead than where I'm at in my life, you know? And I think this class has helped me to kind of take a step back and to realize that, yes, like there's a lot of great things that are ahead for all of us, but you got to understand where you're at and you, then you have to plan and attack from there. And so finding, finding my true North kind of helped me a lot, kind of stay, stay grounded, I should say. Yeah, I totally agree with what you guys are saying. I have this problem where I think I'm 35 and I'm only 32. <laughs> So I really get stressed about things that the 35-year-olds should be concerned about. And then I, my dad tells me all the time, he's like, Josie, you're 22. It's okay. Yeah. You don't need to worry about retirement yet. You don't need to worry about all this stuff yet. Just be 22. So yeah, just remembering where you're at. I also think it's helped me, like in the book, it kind of talks about how, um, I don't even know where this is. I'm on page 90. But the dysfunctional belief is I need to figure out my best possible life, make a plan, and then execute it. Again, going back to my COVID graduation, you cannot plan things like that. Nothing goes to plan. So I've learned to just enjoy the journey and just take it step at a time because eventually you'll end up somewhere. And if you're taking pretty good steps, I mean, you can't go too far off the path. So yeah, I know this is this is like way off. But I read chapter nine because it said choosing happiness. And the last paragraph in chapter nine, it says designers don't agonize. They don't dream about what could have been. They don't spin their wheels and they don't waste their futures by hoping for a better past. Life designers see adventure in whatever life they are currently building and living into. This is how you choose happiness. And I just like the last sentence where it says, you know, see the adventure in whatever life you're currently building and living into because I mean really we can't I mean when I'm happy I'm not thinking about the future or the past I'm thinking about whatever I'm doing right now right now mm -hmm. and that's all you can do honestly so absolutely absolutely <laughs> kind of going off of oh sorry oh no Some you're good ago. you're good oh. <laughs> and then I, I yeah I just have something to build off that as well oh wait, go ahead Connor go ahead well I'm gonna lead us into like something else so you go oh, okay 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 I, well, I, I was going to ask a question. Um, so kind of going off of what Logan was saying, you know, we got to find that happiness, you know, in every single day, you know, because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Like Josie was saying, we can make a plan, but there's chaos, 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 chaos. And it's going to make that plan go left, right, backwards, you know. Um, and so I'm looking at page 37 and I'm, I, I'm in my mind, this question ties into what we're talking about right now. So where do your views on work and life complement each other? Because we work to live, you know, we, we, we don't live to work. You know, we, we have these views. We want to be happy. We want to have that joy every single day. So how do we balance, you know, this is what I do for work. And that's that it provides the life, you know, I want to live. So I'll, I'll read it again. Where do your views on work and life complement one another? I can speak to this because, sorry, Connor, we just oh, you're keep good. talking over no. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Real quick, though. So, like, being obviously a business owner and working from home, there it's really hard because my bedroom is my office. And <laughs> it's really become difficult to separate the two. But something I've been learning in Atomic Habits is designating <laughs> spaces and time. So... I have designated my desk for schoolwork and work work. Anywhere else in my room is off limits. Like my window mm -hmm. seat, that is only for thinking deeply about life. My bed is only for sleeping and just <laughs> making those different distinctions. Like if I'm not, if I'm doing my work in my bed, like 
I'm going to take a nap. It's just not going to be good and I'm not going to feel productive about it. Um, but yeah, making those different just distinctions has helped me. It's also helped me to time block. So I had this aha moment with a TikTok once and they were like, you've got 24 hours in the day, break that up into three intervals of eight. Yeah, I have to make sure that works. That works. So three <laughs> intervals of eight hours. So you've got eight hours of just good solid sleep. You've got eight hours of focused, working hard. And then you have eight hours to do the work or the play, the life, the all the rest of the things that we do in our life. And so that mindset has helped me a lot to just balance it all and have it complement each other without overlapping each other. I think that's a great answer. Thank Josie, you. I'm kind of in the same boat because real estate agent, you're self-employed. And so mm -hmm. I do the same thing. I'm taking 24 credits this semester and oh. that's, that's been a beast in itself. Dang, but then work all of a sudden has been like the busiest I've ever been in my whole life. And so I used to not time, time block everything, anything. I used to wake up at like noon every day and just like do homework, <laughs> you know, maybe go to the office. But now it's like, I, I've done the same thing. I have to time block every single bit of my day or else I just fall behind. Um, but going back to like the work-life balance, there was some of the companies yet last night and they're like we have mm -hmm. great work-life balance like as soon as you leave work like you don't have to worry about work and that's just something that I'll never have but I think that it comes to choosing your priorities like in real estate I could kind of pick and choose when I want to work usually you're showing houses on Saturdays but if I have kids one day I have a baseball tournament then I'm going to show right houses later in the day you know and so I think that it's just defining your priorities in your work-life balance and um and then definitely making sure you actually go to work if you're self-employed. <laughs> yeah, something. Um, so I served. I served a mission. Um, and I had been out for like a year, and I was talking to my mission president. And I had a few other responsibilities, and I was kind of like, just like felt like life was so crazy. I'm like, freak! Like, I got so much to do. And I asked him, I'm like, how do you stay balanced? Like, like what do you do to stay balanced? And he's like, you know. The, what's been able to work for me is when I'm at work, I'm 100% at work. And when I'm at home, I'm 100% at home. And so that that for me is what I try to do. And like right now I have two jobs. I have like a, a nine to five job and then I do stuff after. So I feel like I'm always doing things. And but when I get home at night, I'm just hanging out with my wife or doing whatever. Like I try to be present. Like I try not to be on my phone. Like I try to just be there. And I think that's helped me so much to first off, stay sane and to not go crazy <laughs> from work and all this stuff going on. But um, like back to that question, like work and life, they have to complement each other. If they don't, like you're going to have such a hard time. And if they don't, then you need to find a way to kind of bridge that gap a little bit. So. Awesome. Um, I don't know where we're at on time, but um, going back to what we were talking I about, you know, I have 27 minutes on the timer, but I know I started it a little late. So <laughs> yeah, we, we can kind of talk about this. And then I think that we're pretty close to being able to wrap up. But um, I like when we were talking about you're most happy when you're engaged in one specific task. And if you go to chapter three, it's it's wayfinding. And we all we did a homework assignment on this where we have a task. And then there's engagement, energy, and flow state. And I just want to know kind of what you guys, what your flow state is when you're doing something in the present and that's all you're focused on and that's when you're most happy. One of mine is, Jackson, I know that you go to the gym. I know you work out. But like when I'm working out, I feel like that's like when I'm in my prime flow state because I just have headphones on. That's the one thing I'm focused on. I'm not worried about looking at texts. So that's kind of like one of the things that I find my flow state in and that's where I'm happiest. And I'd love to know what you guys, where your flow state is. I can what? talk about this. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'll go first anyways. Okay. So I have been trying to figure out like my flow state for working again, because 
it is very easy to get sidetracked and not get stuff done or take way too long to get stuff done. So I have found that obviously just sitting at my desk and focusing, saying this, uh, these are the tasks I'm going to get done today, that has helped. But what has also oddly helped is a, um, I'm trying to find it, it's a playlist I found on Spotify. It's called One Hour Focus, One Hour Hyper Focus. So it's like beta waves for concentration and memory. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it, but I turned that on and for some reason it like does something to my brain and I can just be there with my one assignment. That's so cool. that has been a game changer for me. I don't know the science behind it. It could just be placebo effect, but <laughs> I was going to say maybe it's, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I think, I mean, I was going to say, I think I have multiple, like, I think it just kind of depends on the day and kind of what, you know, obviously is going on in my life. But I will say there's always like, if I'm in the mountains, I'm like, I'm just totally gone. Like I'm just in the mountains. <laughs> fun. Like it's, I don't know. It's something about like just being in the mountains is just helps me for some reason. I don't know. I just totally forget about everything else which maybe isn't a good thing, but <laughs> and I think that that also brings up another point where it's like, you have to give yourself, you know, those things like going to the gym, like you have to give yourself breaks and, you know, and things that like you can go and forget about other things in your life. And I think that's, that's a huge, I mean, it'll boost your, your, your work, your school, because you, you're you're energized again because you had that little break <clears throat> yeah for me um pretty similar to logan i have two things i'd say one is golf and like now that it's like <laughs> golf season i am like every day i'm like let me go <laughs> golfing every single day and i can't go every day and i'm like man this sucks like why am i not golfing <laughs> right now it's been so nice outside i'm gone like once so i'm like what the heck <laughs> um but the other one, like Logan, like when I, I I have a cabin, my wife has a cabin we go to in the summers and there's no cell service, like there's Wi-Fi in the cabin. So if somebody really needs to get a hold of us, they can. But like when I'm just out there, like I don't bring my phone anywhere. I'm like, this is so amazing. No service. Nobody's bothering me. Like such a good reset. And I, I totally agree with Logan. Like everybody needs that. Like you two, Connor and and Jackson, you know, we can tell you guys go to the gym. You guys are yoked, you know? And so <laughs> we can see that you guys well. need that gym time and you better keep that gym time. Cause if I'm walking into the case of and I see Jackson in there pumping some iron with that mustache, <laughs> I will be so motivated. It'll be crazy. So <laughs> oh, kind of the funny thing is too. So I'm like looking at engagement and energy and it's, some days I go to the gym and like my engagement is like super high, my energy is super high and I'm like really in the flow state. But when my energy is like low, like if I didn't get enough sleep, my engagement dial goes down and I'm I'm probably really not in the flow state. Does that ever get like that when you're in the mountains or golfing? Yeah, no, I, I definitely feel that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you're not taking care of yourself, it's so hard to get in the flow state. Like, even if you're in, like, this picture-perfect area, like, you got to do something to get yourself there. And, like, if you're not Absolutely. having to sleep, that pre-workout hasn't kicked in yet or something, you know, like, it's <laughs> tough, man. <laughs> it is tough. And I also uh, think if you're, if go you're ahead, Logan. slacking, you know, if you're slacking, you know, in work or at school, like, you can't get in the flow state. So I feel like if you're always working hard, like, going back to, you know, being in a hundred percent, wherever, where you're at, like if you are a hundred percent, wherever you're at, and then later on you're in, and you're in the mountains or you're golfing, you can be a hundred percent there too. You know, I think if you're 50% at work and then you go golfing, you're like, shoot, like I forgot to do that at work. You know, like I just, I a hundred percent wherever you are is, is huge too in the flow state. Absolutely. Um, kind of going off of the, the gym, uh, analogy, uh, you know, if you, let's say you're working out arms and you only do your right arm, your left arm is going to be out of whack, you know? And so it's just like your life, you know, there's different parts of your life that you have to keep in check. Like Logan was saying, you know, you gotta, you can't just 50% work 
and not feel in that flow state when you're in that flow state, you know, you're, you're going to have that thought in your head, like, Oh shoot, I probably could have done a better job at that. You know Um, that's, you kind of made me think about that Logan and to kind of answer the previous question, what my flow state is, Jim, obviously I love it. Um, I also kind of lose myself in uh, making my wife happy. Um, Just kind of making other people happy. I know people say, you know, you got to make yourself happy and that's why I go to the gym. But uh, I love making my family happy. And I think when I spend time with my family, really forget about work. You know, I know I did 100% at work. I can really concentrate on the moment like we were previously, previously saying and feel that joy, you know, with my family. That's awesome. Where are we at on time? Should we wrap this up? We are, so on my timer, we're at 35. So I bet we're like at 40. Okay. Well, yeah, I think that, how do you guys want to wrap it up? Do you want to do like favorite parts of the book, book suggestion, or like just something you want to point out? Yeah, let's just do something like that. That works. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Okay. I mean, for me, I think that you could do either one, book suggestion, whatever. But I think that after reading this book, I think that it's really important to be in the present you know I I don't think that you could design your life the way you want if you're just constantly thinking about the future it's like we're all in school you know let's focus on getting good grades actually paying attention in class and so for me it's just staying present and we're focusing on what's what's the here and now is I think my favorite thing that I've taken from the book I can go next um I would just like to point out the life design choosing process and that is gather and create next step is narrow down and then choose and then let go and move on. I like it. Okay. Yeah. I like um, all through the book, it says dysfunctional belief and it's usually either something negative or something that's unattainable. And then it has you reframe that thinking. And that's something that I've seen is so powerful, like words. It's crazy how much they affect you. Like if you say, this is so hard, I'm like, if you just change that to this is challenging, like you'll perform so much differently. Like it's those small, simple changes of reframing your thinking that will bring about big things. And so that book, it helped me to see that again. So Jess, you want me to go or you go? I don't care. You can okay, go. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, kind, kind of piggybacking off of uh, what Nick was saying. Uh, I, I really like this. Uh, it's on page 64. Uh, it's a dysfunctional belief. It says I'm stuck. And then the reframe is I'm never stuck because I can always generate a lot of ideas. Um, I think our perspective is what is going to get us where we want to be, help us complete those goals enjoy life in the moment instead of worrying about tomorrow or yesterday. Uh, changing that perspective is what is is going to help us live a fulfilling life. And so that's what I really liked about this book, just kind of helping us switching our perspective instead of thinking that's impossible, thinking, okay, there's a solution. I just don't know it yet. And then my thing, I just would highly recommend Atomic Habits in conjunction <laughs> with this book. I did not think the book was going to be that good, okay? But it really is. And where these two books are so in line with each other, like, and I just, I was reading Atomic Habits, and then I was reading this book, and then it's like the same thing. <laughs> so it's just giving me the motivation to design the life that I want and be the person I want to be. And it's giving me the framework to do that which is something unique, I think, to both of these books. I know a lot of like self-help books that I've read are just kind of like, you can do this, you've got this, (laughs) woohoo. But these ones, I think, actually give a good framework of that. And it makes it a lot more applicable and a lot more doable, I guess. Highly recommend it. (laughs) Awesome. All right. Well, I think that this was good. I think we covered a lot. Um. I'll just stop the recording and when we could talk after, make sure it recorded. <laughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you, guys.